Hello. We're going through a bit of a heat wave here at the moment in the UK. The temperatures are much higher than we would expect. Um, and so it's putting lots of stress on lots of vegetables here at homegrown veg. And what you're looking at now is my onion bed. Um, the onion in the front of the shot is a winter onion. It's one of the few that hasn't um, gone to seed, that hasn't bolted. Um, but this is the type of weather that can cause plants to run to seed and to bolt. It's just too hot for them and it's too dry for them. Although I do get round with the watering can and I do try and give them all a drink and try not to let them dry out but occasionally you miss the odd one and that'll be the one that'll go to seed, that'll be the one that'll bolt. And the situation's even worse if you're growing in pots or buckets and in my case in black pots which attract the heat um, and they dry out very very quickly. Now I'm just going to nip indoors and get a thermometer. Uh, I'll pop it in the bed next to this onion and let's see what sorts of temperatures this onion's uh, having to grow in. When I place this thermometer next to the onion, the tip of the probe will be in the soil to a depth of about one inch. Now you may say that this thermometer is in direct sunlight and that it would be cooler than this in the shade and I would have to agree with you but these onions aren't in the shade they're in a raised bed in a garden and whatever sunshine there is they catch it so these are the temperatures that these onions are exposed to. Now if you're growing in pots and buckets, you have the opportunity, providing the pot or the bucket isn't too big and heavy, to move it into the shade, to get it away from the sun, if you feel that will be beneficial. Um, but whatever you do, you need to keep on top of the watering in these elevated temperatures because if you lose whatever's in that pot you will not resurrect it it needs to be kept alive it needs to be watered and it needs to be watered regularly and if you can move it out of the sun that's not a bad idea either As I'm shooting this video, I'm looking around the garden 
and I've just noticed what I think is a carrot going to seed in a pot. So I'm going to put that pot in front of the camera now and we're going to look at carrots going to seed. This is just one of my pots of carrots. I've moved it in closer to the house now, we're in the shade. It really is seriously hot in the garden today. Molly doesn't know where to put herself. She's been in the sun, she's been in the shade, she's been in the sun, she's been in the shade. She's lying on the grass, she's lying on concrete. She goes indoors, she comes outdoors. It's one of those days, if you've got a dog, you'll know what I'm talking about. If it's an older dog, or a black dog, yep, the sun kills them, doesn't it? Um, so Molly's disappeared. I don't know if she'll pop back in shop to, uh, before I finish this video. Right, so this is the pot um, that I spotted while I was filming the beginning of this video. Um, and yeah, I brought it up into the shade. Now we're going to take a closer look at this foliage and, and what I'm going to tell you is this, that the carrot that has gone to seed in this pot shows a couple of characteristics of uh, any vegetable that goes to seed in the garden. Like beetroot, like onions, uh, like parsnips, it tends to be the tallest vegetable in that patch. So it'll be the tallest onion in the garden, the tallest beetroot in the garden. It grows tall, and it grows tall because it wants to put a seed head up, and it needs that seed head up as far from the ground as it can, so that if it disperses seed naturally, it has a better chance and a better spread. So a vegetable that's bolted or gone to seed tends to be the tallest in the patch. Um, so if you're going to check your carrots or any of your vegetables after watching this video, just look for the tall vegetables and give them a, a closer look. I'm going to zoom in onto these now and show you what a carrot looks like that's gone to seed. Okay, these are, these are normal looking carrots. These are good, healthy carrots. Um, it's a variety called uh, Trevor, and it's been in this pot three months. Trevor, oh, here's Molly now. Trevor's been in this pot uh, about three months, uh, and it's quite sparsely sowed, so there's lots of room uh, for these carrots to develop. Um, but what we don't want, we don't want is carrots gone to seed, taking up any of that room, because you're not going to get a carrot at the end of the day, so you may as well have it out, and that's what I'm going to do. Now then, when we take this carrot out, we open up a path into the soil, that should there be carrot fly about, we've opened the door, we've given them an easy way in. So what you need to do is, if you take carrots out, um, Put some soil in that wall that's left and water your pot, water the ground. Just don't leave that opening, just don't give the carrot fly a chance. And the other thing you need to remember is the carrot fly is attracted by smell. When we pull this carrot out we're probably going to crush the stem a little. Uh, we won't realise we've uh, let any of that carroty smell escape into the environment. But if it's carrot flies about they'll smell it and they'll come calling. So we fill the hole, we water the pot, and the carrot we take out goes in the bin. Okay, right, so these carrots, yep, yeah, they're looking great. 
lots of stems. If you look from the base of the carry, there's about one, two, three, four, five stems coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six stems coming up. One, two, three, four, five, six stems coming up. In fact, they're not stems, they're leaves. Okay, come right from the base of the carrot. Now let me just turn this pot round. Right, this is the guy we're looking for. A single stem. A single stem. Because this carrot wants to produce a seed head on the top of that stem, so there's a single stem. So this is what you want in your pot. One, two, three, four, five, six leaves coming up from the base of the carrot. That's a good carrot. This is one stem coming up from that carrot. This carrot has gone to seed. You will not get a carrot on the bottom of this if you leave it in this pot, so it may as well be out. So we're going to take it out now. Then we're going to put some soil into this pot. We're going to water the pot and we're going to take this and put it in the bin. Okay. This carrot will get no bigger. All the energy is going into this stem. This plant is not going to produce a carrot. It certainly isn't now, it's out. So I'll get some soil to go in this hole and then we'll water. In fact, it's such a small hole, I can close it up without any additional soil. So I've closed it up now. I'll go and put this in the bin. I'll come back and I'll water this pot. Excuse me, Molly. Excuse me. Okay, one other carroty tip. Uh, when we water this pot, when we water our carrots, do not water over the top of these carrots. If you're growing in a pot or a bucket, because most of that water will finish up on the surrounding area. It will not go in the pot and it will not do the carrots any good. Water the soil in the pot. Always. Whatever vegetables you're growing, Always water the soil in the pot, never over the vegetables. You're just wasting water. And this is the way to do it. New grey molly. Yeah, molly said that's the way to do it on grown. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, check your carrots. Uh, check all your vegetables. If there's any going to seed, you may as well have them out. This is homegrown veg. Signing out. <laughs>